Morgan, thank you so much for joining us here on We Talk News this week. The biggest question on everybody's mind is, everybody's getting excited about perhaps moving cannabis from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3, according to the Controlled Substances Act, but now the industry is starting to look at Schedule 3 and saying, maybe this is not the best thing for the industry. What's going on down there in Washington, D.C.? Well, I think that there's growing recognition of the inadequacies of Schedule 3 when it comes to real substantive cannabis policy reform. I mean, really, the only thing that it would do that would have a practical impact would be uh, potentially uh, removing the issue with 280E. Mm -hmm. um, now, that's not for certain, but the language is pretty clear that that would be uh, one of the other consequences of that. Um, but cannabis policy reform advocates are uh, pretty strongly in alignment that descheduling is really the only way to bring state cannabis programs into alignment with federal law and to be able to do all the things that we need to do with cannabis at the federal level, including regulation and uh, um, opening up pathways to research, but um, primarily removing criminal penalties and all of the other consequences that go along with cannabis use at the federal level. Um, now, I think that it's, uh, it's questionable you know, if we're even going to see action on this uh, in the near term uh, or even before the election. Now, there's a poll out that says if President Joe Biden's administration delivers some kind of federal reform, it could be a game changer for his uh, aspirations to return to the White House. In fact, I think the number was 11 percent of a bump if he's able to pull this off. That's the cannabis voting block. Uh, is that an accurate number, do you think? Um, it's difficult to say. So we've long known the impact of presidential elections on cannabis elections, particularly ballot initiatives. Uh, but until recently, there wasn't a whole lot of research on the effect of cannabis issues on presidential elections. Um, we're starting to see now that um, support for cannabis policy reform energizes uh, young voters uh, across the political spectrum and increases support for candidates regardless of their political uh, party. Um, so I think some smart politicians are really starting to grasp this and are starting to be a little bit more vocal about their support for cannabis policy reform. Uh, that being said, it's still largely considered a non-priority issue, um, but that is starting to change among voters as well. I think people are frustrated with the fact that you've got health and human services saying one thing and urging, and then the DEA gets it and says, no, it's our decision, no matter how many people think it may go the other way. Uh, this is just uh, business as usual in Washington, D.C., with all the bureaucracy and all the different levels and different uh, alphabet soup kind of uh, departments that are down there. You're used to that. I'm not sure the regular populace is, though. This is real politics at work. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Well, so uh, the DEA has final say in this. Uh, obviously, the president could put significant pressure on the DEA to uh, um, make a you know, very specific uh, policy move. Uh, but that can be politically difficult for a sitting president, especially during the current climate where there's lots of accusations being thrown around about weaponizing uh, federal agencies uh, for political reasons. Um, now, this is something that um, I would not view as being the case. I mean, I know that um, there are some people that might not want to give the president uh, what would be considered a win on this issue. And we're actually also seeing this in uh, uh, Congress as well. Um, you know, one specific example was um, uh, Senate Republicans uh, basically preventing a cloture vote on a, uh, a veterans cannabis bill, uh, which was really a, just a simple study bill, just so that they didn't give Senator Tester a win, and he's coming up for re-election uh, this year. Um, so we see a lot of that, but I think that it's really uh, incumbent upon advocates to impress upon politicians uh, across the aisle that uh, this is a bipartisan issue, and that um, holding it up is actually going to have consequences for them at the ballot box. And that's something that I think, um, you know, uh, both members of Congress, as well as anybody that's running for president, is really going to have to contend with coming into November, because, as you said, this is a, uh, a an increasingly popular issue among the American public. Support has never been higher for legalization and for uh, restoring the or repairing the harms caused by prohibition. And, and uh, politicians ignore this at their peril. And uh, at least one presidential candidate has bowed out and immediately mentioned the fact that perhaps his state is ready to go adult use. I'm talking about Florida and Governor DeSantis. Uh, that did that come as a surprise to you? 
Uh, DeSantis has really been all over the place when it comes to this issue. Uh, in recent years, he uh, has uh, been pretty bad about it. And obviously, his government is actively trying to prevent uh, legalization right. from being on the ballot um, in Florida this year. So, um, you know, I think that it's pretty clear to the voters that uh, um, Florida is ready for legalization. So uh, maybe he should tell his attorney general the same thing. <laughs> All right. Hey, leave me with something positive, please, because there's so much frustration going on now in the industry between just trying to survive and, and clinging to any positive news coming out of Washington, D.C. Give me give me something that the industry can say, oh, at least Morgan said this might happen. Well, I think that there's still a possibility for moving uh, incremental reforms through, and we're continuing to see bills be introduced in Congress on a pretty regular basis. Uh, you know, just this week, we saw the introduction of a bill that would uh, prevent people from being denied federal housing uh, assistance if they are cannabis uh, lawful cannabis consumers. Um, we saw a whole bunch of people sign on to be co-sponsors for the CURE Act, which would prevent uh, past cannabis use from being a disqualifier for federal employment and security clearances. Uh, we're still seeing forward momentum on safe banking uh, in uh, both chambers. And I think that, uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of possibility there. It's going to be difficult and certainly an uphill battle, uh, particularly in terms of just getting time on the schedule. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, there, there are opportunities there for us to, uh, to move things forward. And, you know, at the end of the day, regardless of what happens with scheduling, we are seeing federal agencies and a sitting president say that cannabis has medical uses and does not belong in Schedule 1. Um, that's a great starting point. And one that, uh, you know, we hadn't seen before. So I think that overall, uh, that is a sign of positive momentum. Uh, but again, you know, we, we're dealing with, uh, you know, nearly 100 years of uh, prohibition. It's going to take some time to unwind it. That's right. And uh, all I can tell you is I know you're at least half my age. Uh, I can't believe I actually lived to hear uh, uh, the fact that cannabis would be part of the political policy discussion in a presidential race. And I actually heard the president of the United States use the word. I believe he used the word marijuana, but I'll take that as a win being my age and uh, moving this forward. So there's something I'm clinging to, too, for my generation. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, but that's pretty much my baseline. Um, but that being said, I think that, um, you know, regardless of how grim things might look at times, uh, that can't affect our advocacy. We have to keep pushing forward. And at those times, I think it's important to push a little harder. That's right. And thank goodness for p people like you and Normal and the Marijuana Policy Project and the NCIA and all the other pro-cannabis organizations down there in Washington, D.C. Just remember, we're all fighting for you and supporting everything you do in your work. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it.